Hello and welcome in nursing webinar session. Myself, Shanti Bhattacharya. We are going to have continuation of orthopedic series this month. We did only few in the month of July. And today the session is all about the very you know prevalent sports injury, uh, nothing but uh, ACL, which is anterior cruciate ligament and its management. It is an you know, honor and uh, privilege to share this session with uh, Dr. V. Ramreti Garu, who is our uh, expertise uh, and he's our senior uh, orthopedic uh, robotic uh, clinical director and eminent expert for knee and hip surgeries. I welcome you, sir, and uh, thank you for accepting the webinar invite. Thank you. And let me also welcome Ms. Pushpa, who is our dedicated and very energetic nurse manager who heads the medical surgical ward. I welcome you, Pushpa. Very yes. good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. And this is Pushpa from High Tech City. And thank you for giving me this great platform for to speak in this webinar, ma'am. Yes. So we can just go to the slide, the number two. So uh, this is... This topic is a little bit, you know, this is uh, this diagnosis and this condition is not much known to the nurses. Uh, so the first question we would like to, you know, have your opinion on um, you know, the prevalence of the ACL and why common among, uh, uh, you know, female players or, or athletes. So we would like to know from your answer. Uh, when you take the prevalence, we are talking about uh, sports only. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. In sports, if you take uh, 10 elite players, two players, two out of 10, that's 20% at any point during their career will have ACL injury. That's 20% of the players. Yes. Okay. Now, why women? It's true, the ratio is more than 60% in girls as compared to boys. Okay, 60-40. Why does this happen? If you look at it, it's the hormones which play a major role. Girls in general, they are short. There is laxity of the ligaments. When you say laxity, they are stretchable. Okay. Yes. The third thing is if you take the thigh bone and the tibia, the thigh bone, the notch is very narrow. So the ligament which goes through the now notch when they play the sports, it impinges on the notch and the risk of tears are high. So, so you... yes, sir, please. So it's a com it's a combination of several factors, you know, the hormones, the laxity of the ligaments, the height, and the narrow notch. So that that contributes to the anatomical features in the yes. female. Yes. Anatomy and physiology. Physiology. Okay. Yes. Both put together. Yes. So let us see what we have in the rest of the session. Pushpa, over to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Now, today we discuss about the anterior cruciate ligament is nothing but ACL, a tear or sprain in the center of the knee. So we can see in this image, there is a normal ACL and torn ACL also. And in this the side image also, we can see an anterior cruciate ligament tear in detail. So, sir, let's again... see. Again, we would like to know here is ACL uh, is this injury is a very serious and how like how long one should wait for the surgery or when they just when they should come to the hospital. Sometimes if we get to see people, you know, or some patient, they just have the old injury, but they do not come to the hospital. They just manage their activities of daily living just like that. So. Yeah, uh, that's a good question, Shandi. Most of our patients, they come quite late. Yes. Right? Yes. And the reason is quite simple. They think it's a normal sprain. Right? Yes. Now, how do you diagnose ACL? Whenever there is an injury, sometimes pa patients, you know, they hear a popping sound. Number one. Even a small twist. You, know, one, you miss one step on the while walking up and down the stairs, you can cause ACL tears. Road accidents can cause it. Okay. So it is hyperextension. The knee stretches out and then rotates. That, that is a mechanism of ACL injury. One of the common findings is swelling of the knee joint. So if patients feel that there is swelling, not able to stand, that means if there is a feeling of instability, yes. 
instability and associated swelling, then they should visit the hospital as soon as possible. Don't wait. Okay. There are some doctors who say we can't get an MRI scan because there will be a lot of blood in the knee joint. That's not true. MRI will give accurate results even on the day of injury. Right? Yes. Now, another reason why I tell the patients to come early, it might not be associated, just isolated ACL tear. There could be an associated meniscal tear or the joint cartilage injury. So this joint cartilage injury and meniscal tears, they need surgery as soon as possible. Whereas isolated ACL tears, we usually wait for four to six weeks till the swelling settles down. Okay. So uh, a person who is injured at this spot, so uh, uh, what precaution would you want that person to take and come to the hospital? Would he, right. would he or she should, you know, weigh, weigh the, you know, leg or like partial weight bearing or how they should come if they are just walking? When, whenever a person gets injured, you don't know whether it's a fracture, whether it's one ligament injury or whether multiple ligaments injuries, we just don't know. So the best thing is to splint the leg, splint the knee joint, use an immobilizer, avoid weight bearing till a proper assessment is done. At the site of injury, give painkillers as necessary. Apply ice packs. Yes. What we call rice therapy, R-I-C-E, rest, ice, compression, and yes. elevation. All right? Yes. That's the best policy. Till further assessment is done in the hospital. So uh, RICE is very, uh, you know, great acronym whenever we contract these kind of knee injuries or any kind of bone injuries. So nurses, you can just learn this and try to give this first aid whenever you see any injured person. Rest right. uh, over to you, Vishwa. Cool. Yes, ma'am. So let's see our the causes of the ACL. During sports or any activity that involves sudden stops or changes in direction, jumping, etc., Sports like soccer, basketball, football, and we can see like how already sir told to us in RTA cases, simple twisting of the knee on uneven surfaces, unsupervised fitness activities. Yes, ma'am. So, sir, um, is there any specific age group or teenagers who contract these injuries? It's uh, prevalent in all age groups, right from childhood till old age. Now, it is very common in adolescent, you know, 14, 16, 20 years of age, and then in the middle age groups, because they play a lot of uh, sports. As you go to the 40s and all, it's usually road traffic accidents and domestic, like uneven surfaces, slip in the bathroom, staircase, right? Wet floors. These are the common modalities of injuries. Now, you have put a slide showing unsupervised fitness activity. Yes. This is a very, very common problem nowadays. We have got so many gyms, fitness yes. centers, where there are trainers who don't know the anatomy. They just put on very loud music and push each and every individual to the maximum possible limit. Now, we have to understand that every person is different. Every person's body is different. The fitness levels are different. If you put up the same level of uh, intense training program, then injuries are bound to happen. So the workouts have to be customized to every individual. So a proper assessment is necessary to see whether there's any stiffness, whether there's any arthritis, whether there's any laxity, any weakness. The medical problems like diabetes, thyroid, all these play a role. So whenever I see people, I advise them, don't just go for, uh, you know, uh, centers yes. where there are only trainers, but there have to be fitness trainers who have been taught. They should have their qualifications and expertise. Then only it is safe. So to, do you get to see your patients who would take your opinion before they start the gym activity, sir? Uh, some of them, yes. Some of them, definitely. Nowadays, there is more awareness. Yes. Uh, I've seen a uh, la lot of uh, injuries in uh, in the so-called uh, you know 
celebrity yes. fitness and the gyms. Yes. So I have operated on several of them. And you know the word, it's a word of mouth. So people come back and say, can I do these activities? Yes. Yeah. So let's look into the risk factors of the ACL gym. Young females are more prone, especially athletes, using faulty movements, use of oral contraceptives in premenopausal women, post-traumatic osteoarthritis. And these are the images where we can, through cut file, through cut images, we can get it through the MRI diagnosis. So torn ACL over here and the normal, normal ACL is here. So Over Krishna, team. you can go back to the sixth slide. We also would like to have a few uh, insight from Sir. Like here, post-traumatic osteoarthritis, Sir. If yes. we are talking about post-traumatic osteoarthritis, is it just because of ACL or maybe some secondary pathophysiology? Uh, post-traumatic osteoarthritis is not exactly a risk factor for ACL injury. There is already arthritis. Yes. There is pain and stiffness. Yes. So now... The, in trauma or in injury, there could have been an ACL tear. ACL tear, if not treated, can result in post-traumatic osteoarthritis. It is the other way around. Okay? Yes. So, uh, do you also advise some preventive measures for the uh, you know, females who are pre-menopausal pre and going towards the post-menopausal uh, you know, uh, era? So, yes. Do Those who are in their late 30s, in Indian women, the yes. uh, menopausal symptoms start very early, early 40s. So, this age group women should focus on two things. One is their diet. The second is the fitness regimes. As the woman goes from 20s to 30s to 40s, in India especially, their diet changes drastically. They start giving up protein diet, whether it is religious or cultural, for many other reasons. So, one has to understand that as long as woman has got her hormones intact, they are protected. These hormones are anabolic. They will protect their bones and muscles. Once the menopausal symptoms start, there will be fatty degeneration in the muscles. The bones will start getting osteoporotic. Now, bones and muscles, 90% is made up of protein. So where do you get your proteins? From meat, from eggs, vegetarian food like soya, paneer. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is to focus on the fitness regimes. A lot of women, they say we are doing yoga. Yoga is a low intense threshold exercises. It will only give a good feeling, but it will not give any strength to you. What is more important is weight bearing exercises. When I say weight bearing exercises, bricks walking, running on soft surfaces, for upper body weights, these are very important. Thank you so much for uh, giving those tips because I see uh, Pushpa smiling and I myself was smiling as well. Maybe I am the yoga master and uh, who believes in doing yoga, but I'll take your uh, you know uh, preventive uh, tips. Thank you so much for that again. Over to you, Pushpa. Yes, sir. Too. And let's see the symptoms. So when the, there is a ACL test, so swelling in the injury is fresh. Locking, wasting of thigh muscles, instability, lack of confidence to the sports, and running. Yes, OT. So uh, these are the symptoms as you have already told us. And this, uh, what, what is this locking type of feel, sir, uh, for this uh, uh, ACL injury? Swelling, swelling of the knee is because of blood collection, what we call hema, hematoma. Hematoma. Or hematosis. Okay. Yes. Now, locking is exactly not a typical symptom in ACL injury. It can happen if the stump of the ACL gets stuck between the thigh bone and the leg bone. It is more a symptom of meniscal tear. Right? Wasting of the thigh muscle, you will not see in the first few weeks. But six to eight weeks down the line, you will start see, you know, seeing the wasting of the thigh muscles on the inner side, on the middle aspect. Instability 
can lead to lack of confidence to do even basic walking, you know, brisk walking up and down the stairs or walking and changing the direction. People lose confidence sometimes. These are the main symptoms. And we see them, uh, you know, uh, taking the support of crutch and uh, single stick uh, and then they do their, uh, resume their office activities and all, I think, yes. True, absolutely. Yeah. So I think sir, this is like ACL injury and as I was uh, understanding the slides which has been sent to by you, I yes. see doctors coming and doing this test and we, by doing the make of this uh, you know, slide only we could understand that this is a draw test, anterior yes. draw test and uh, is this a kind of very crucial physical examination before it any is. imaging is done? Now whenever patient says I got ACL tear, it could be a full ACL tear but the patient might not have any instability. Right? So it is very important to do your assessment in the clinic, anterior drawers test, and there's another test called Latchman test. Latchman. So we assess and see whether the leg bone is coming forward. So if it's a thigh bone and it's a leg bone, while doing anterior, is it coming forward? Right? Yes. And there are different grades of drawers test, one, two, and three. And based on that, we decide whether the patient needs an MRS scan and whether the patient needs any surgical intervention. So this is uh, done before any imaging has been prescribed? Yes. yes. Yeah. So now the very important uh, slide we can see for our nurses, what are the responsibility for the nurses before patient is going to the surgery? We need to follow the pre-op checklist where strictly now some I have I will read some of the parameters for the pre-op checklist. Especially we need to obtain the consents like anesthesia procedure, high risk, a blood transfusion consent, and etc. And we need to look into the patient's comorbidities like diabetes, history of di known case of diabetes and hypertension also. And let's, uh, we need, we need to look after the bread uh, labs like virology, all these things, especially pre physical preparation is very important for the, uh, for the nurses, like chlorestin bath to be given before prior to the surgery, no ornaments, and we need to offer a patient to the OT attire also. Yes. And so, sir, you will agree with all these uh, parameters which is uh, followed by the nurses and anything special you would like to tell the nurses here. Sometimes some non-compliances we see, we only find uh, during the intro. So, anything else you would like to tell? Uh, uh, Pushpa touched it rightly. Uh, skin preparation, very, very important. Ours is a tropical country, so the temperatures are usually high. The bacterial count is high. So they come from far off places in public transport. So there is contamination. Yes. It's very important once they come into the hospital that they change their dress, have the in bath, and then get to the theater. For the staff on the ward, apart from the virology, blood tests and all, they should be aware that the radiology, the MRI films and the reports are available. All the reports, yeah. It is one of the common errors for the patients not to bring the films. They bring the report. That is not enough. Right? As I said before, uh, the knee might not just be an ACL injury. There could be meniscus. There could be other ligaments. Yeah. So when we go in, sometimes it's a surprise. Like, oh, there's a meniscal tear. I don't have the equipment now to repair the meniscus. So everything changes. In the theater list, sometimes they might not put up the complete details of the surgery. So this is where mistakes happen and this is where the nurse it's a very simple thing. Do you have all the radiographs? It's a checklist. Yes. And then inquire, are we doing the right side or the left side? Yes, right, right side. Yes. Cross matches, you know, check it with the pre-op note, with the clinical note. So these are the basic, basic principles which the staff on the wards have to follow. Okay. So we request yes. all the nurses, as Sir rightly said, whenever there is a handover process, you can just not only hospital uh, reports, even patient may bring a few OP reports as well. All the yes. imaging, radiology imaging have to be properly handed over. And now Pushpa is going to speak about IPSG goals, a few enlightening about it. Yes, Pushpa. 
Yes, sir. We we can avoid all the errors by following all these uh, six IPSG goals for the patient safety. All these are especially for the identification patient correctly, improve effective communications, improve the safety of high alert medica medications, and ensure correct site, correct procedure, how sir said. So we need to follow this all six IPSG goals, sir. Uh, let's see. Now, okay, tell me what IPSG is, the full form. International Patient Safety Goals, sir. These are are the six goals we are we are following sir as per the jci so we would like to understand from you pushpa that what do you mean by improve effective communication that's what we were talking about the handover it yes sir what nurse and the pre-op nurse and the further ot nurse yes, don't you think yes. so yes yes yeah. sir so man, this is too early. Yeah. Yeah. The, yes, one of the communications is to check whether the patient is fasting or not yes very important. Yes, sir. That's that's all we'll cover in the S bar also, sir. That's how we give handover to the pre-op uh, OT recovery, OT unit, sir. So that is why we also have the NBM display board. Yes. By mm -hmm. mistakenly, if the FNB boy comes and offer the food also, patient will be educated and the board will also resemble that yes, patient is NBM and they can always cross-check with the nurses. This practices should be always, you know, told upon to the fresher nurses and the senior nurses. By the uh, senior uh, nurses. Let me interrupt. Please. Now, the, not usually the communication levels, how they how the mistakes happen. The analysis says no food. The patient will have a nice cup of coffee and says, I did not have food. But I had coffee. Nobody told me not to have coffee. That's a liquid. So we, we have to be very clear. <laughs> yes, very genuine, sir. Very, very, very uh, <laughs> evident. Yes. Yes. Next. Yeah, no, sir, I can see this uh, as you have, uh, you know, guided me with the slide. Uh, there, is, there is a graft fixation. Uh, until yesterday, we would not even know that graft also is being yeah. placed. We thought it is only only the reconstruction repair by uh, the, the, the handing of arthroscope and all. This is, again, very good, uh, you know, uh, technology and uh, practices which you would like to know from me. Right. Now, uh, ACL surgery, it is not a repair, it is a reconstruction. reconstruction. Repair is where the original ligament is stitched up. In knee, for ACLs, it does not work. But we have to do reconstruction, which means we have to take material from somewhere else in the body. So there are different tissues available. The two common tissues are hamstrings. Hamstring, hamstring muscles are at the back of the thigh, you know, yeah. posterior aspect. There are four hamstring muscles. So we take two of these muscles, fold them into four and fix it. You can see the slide on the left side. The blue is just a marker to indicate the length. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's a hamstring graft. Now, hamstring graft, the incision are smaller. Right? Yes. But it takes longer to heal. It slightly stretches. So it is slightly weaker as compared to the BTB graft. What is BTB? It is bone, tendon, bone graft. So we take a piece of patella on the kneecap along with the middle one third of the tendon on the front of the knee joint and the leg bone, a piece of the leg bone. So we are taking bone and tendon. The wound is bigger, but the graft is much stronger than hamstrings, number one. Because it's a bone-to-bone -bone healing, the recovery is much faster. Hamstring takes around nine months, whereas BTB graft takes less than five months. So I usually keep the BTB graft for revision surgeries or for sports, you know, top elite athletes. So there's a difference between the two. So should the athletes or players uh, should go back to return to sport or maybe they'll have to wait till five to nine months as you indicated? Uh, two things. One, when we do the surgery, the physiotherapy starts. Physiotherapy is to allow the patients to get back to normal daily activities. Normal daily activities does not mean sport. To get back to sports, there is what you call SNC, essence therapy. Now, there are certain criteria the patient has to fulfill before they can go back to sports. So it does not mean like if a patient has BTB, I will go back to sports after five months. No. They have to go through certain trials. Yes. 
If they fail, they have to redo the physiotherapy, redo the fitness training. Then only we allow them to go back to sports. Yes. We will also see the recovery criteria in the later slides. Yeah. So 13 is again, as you said, uh, this slide again, maybe post after surgery, you see this again, the compliance of anterior draw test. Yeah. I do check after surgery, yes. Yeah. So let's see the post-operative care, extended post-op care. Total when after the post -op, uh, after the surgery, so we'll start with the physio. Toe touch wear bearing, walking with walker, walk up support, non-weight bearing or partial weight bearing, four to five days for four to five days. And physio interventions also like with the we will start with the dynamic knee brace, like RM exercises, range of motion of exercises also. So immediate post-op care, the, this is a good practice for us. So we need to uh, check for the ensure safe patient position in the room, vitals. And as usual, we will pain manage to be done as soon as possible. DVT drug injectable, injectables to be must injected and continue the analgesic infusion via epidural line. It's a like standard of the ACL protocol. Hy hygienic care and toileting needs to be assessed for the patient. And if the patient is able to manage to take the diet, has according to the patient condition, we can provide a diet also. Anything else you would like to uh, uh, and, give from your yes. answer for immediate post-operative care where nurses should be? Can we go back to the final, you know, previous slide? One more. Yeah. Uh, this one, right? Yes. Now, post-op care after ACL surgery depends again whether we have repaired the meniscus whether there's any cartilage injury, okay. So if it is an isolated ACL injury, I allow partial weight bearing straight away, okay. No toe touch, foot on the ground. Okay. Sir. And zero to 50 degrees of movement, right, for isolated ACL injuries. If there is meniscal repair, then for the first 10 days, I don't allow knee bending. At all. At all, give rest. And then we start 0 to 30, 0 to 50, 0 to 90 over 6 to 8 weeks. So the treatment, the physiotherapy regime changes according to what the problem is and what surgery has been done. Okay. So having these, having these braces on, patient can still go uh, to the toilet yes. and partial squat, like commode squat. He can. Yes, of course, yes. So what complications can we see in this ACL? So higher risk of developing osteoarthritis in the knee, even after post-surgery. Recovery period, eight to nine months. So the RTS is not about return to sports. Ma'am, over to you. So sir, uh, like as you were mentioning five to nine months, can they resume driving and all, if at all the car is not automatic? Anyways, also we have to paddle the brake. So do they refrain from driving? Whether it is right knee or the left knee, whether it is manual or automatic, I allow the patients to drive the car after four weeks. Oh, great. Not nine months. No, after four to six weeks, they are quite, it is quite safe to drive the car. Okay. Not a two-wheeler. Yes, of course. Yeah. Two-wheeler is off for five to six months. So, the criteria for recovery is minimizing knee swelling, retaining kneecap stability, Regaining full range of motion, strengthening the muscles of the cartilage and hamstrings. So, so preventive, as we have come to the prevention now, uh, sir, would like to add a few of uh, your points from your answer, this preventive aspects. Uh, can you go back to the previous slide, just once? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, the recovery you mentioned correctly, correctly minimizing knee swelling. So, the staff on the ward, they need to know that ice therapy is very important, cryotherapy. Yes. Right? Full range of movement is very important before you start strengthening exercises. Yes. And between the quadriceps and the hamstrings, it is the hamstring muscles which need more strengthening than the quadriceps for ACL surgery, after ACL surgery. Okay? Yes, yes. Now, the preventive aspects, true. Weight is very important. We have to have a balance. It is not just warming up. The reflexes have to be good. Having adequate fluids, now that's not mentioned here. If the body is dehydrated, the ligaments, they are quite stiff. 
they just snap if you play sports. So rehydration is a very, very important step before you start doing the sports. Okay. If there is knee pain, it needs proper assessment whether the problem is inside the joint or outside the joint. All knee pains are not knee pains. We have to understand that the knee pain can come from the hip joint. It can come from the back. So assessment of these two joints are crucial. Sometimes we see patients complaining of severe knee pain, but there is very severe arthritis in the hip and they don't have any problem, any pain in the hip at all. What we call referred pain. Right? So we start telling the patients, don't put weight, don't do any exercises for the knee and all. So do the assessment properly. Okay. So yes, sir. And uh, uh, thank you very much. We have come to the end of the session. And I think that was very, very simple, giving all the informative uh, ideas and uh, checkpoints of what nurses should be able to do when they receive this pre and post-operative ACL injury patients. Thank you so much, sir, for your very, very valuable time. And uh, thank you, Pushpa, as well. And that's all we have session today. Thank Thanks, you. Sarajit. Thanks, Pushpa. Thank, right. you, Thank you. I was talking to one of the man, uh, to Sunita this morning. Yes, sir. So the staff should come up with questions. Okay. After so I have one question, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. When uh, this cryotherapy till uh, till when we can continue the at the home? I mean, sir, like we need after to after surgery or yes. after injury. For the first two weeks. First two weeks. Okay. Once the inflammation settles, then you switch over to warm packs. Okay. Okay. Great, sir. So, Thank you so much. Sir. Do you also uh, uh, give the practice of elevation 45 degree? You know, once we uh, receive the patient, immediate. No, no elevation. No. Just one small oh. pillow is enough. Okay. Okay. Yes. We don't need uh, we don't need significant elevation that causes a lot of edema in the foot and ankle. Yes. Yeah. Thank you yes, so sir. much, sir. Thank you. We end the session. All right, okay, take care. Thank you, take care, sir.